These are the true victims of dinosaur movies like the Jurassic World franchise. The true victims are carnivores. Let me explain. Carnivores in media are often depicted as evil and bloodthirsty, which is also the case for prehistoric animals. Describing a handful of these cases might surprise you just how tragic and unfairly vilified carnivores are without you realizing it. The Giganotosaurus was seen as a villain in Dominion, but in reality, the Giga did nothing wrong. It would intimidate and be aggressive only when necessary for the most part. Its home was in flames and its food source was gone. Upon seeing some humans that intruded on its territory, it decided to deal with them. When it couldn't quite get to them, he left them alone. It was acting only based on its natural instincts and was just trying to survive, just like any real animal would. Yet despite that, it was intended to be cheered against. The final battle was a whole smear campaign against the Giga by making it fight the T-Rex for no reason and quote unquote kill Rexy, a fan favorite. And when it got brutally killed in the movie, it was celebrated. The two killers roared in victory as triumphant epic music was playing. It was a whole celebration that Giga got killed because it was just being an animal. An animal that, mind you, didn't even kill a single thing or escape or do anything really. In Fallen Kingdom, the entire home of the Carnotaurus was getting destroyed, with intense earthquakes and molten rock falling everywhere. Instead of acting like a normal, fleeing, confused animal, the Carnotaurus decides to hunt and seek out a quick snack. It stalks the humans and picks a fight with a built, well armored animal, all while its home is getting destroyed. This behavior is just so irrationally bloodthirsty. Carnivores aren't hungry all the time. They're animals that want to survive just like any other organism. So here, the Carnotaurus should be, like all the other normal animals, running away, since carnivores are normal animals. It's been said to me before that this is actually a realistic tank because birds of prey often take advantage during forest fires by stalking and catching prey escaping. But one cannot compare these two situations. One is a light animal catching easy prey that can fly away from temporary fires. The other is a heavy animal stalking and trying to kill prey, including animals it can easily get killed by as its entire home is getting permanently destroyed. In a bit, I'll discuss a version of the Carnotaurus that although actually did a better job, still proves carnivores are the true victims. Okay, now yes, the Indominus Strikes from Jurassic World is a literal psycho dino, but it's still partially a victim and dare I say, exposes a bias against carnivores in media. To see what I mean, let's look at its enclosure. This wall is 40 feet tall, which allows us to measure the length and thus the total area of the enclosure. Doing the calculations, we find the area in this enclosure is around 5.4 times smaller than the required area for an animal of its size. So this enclosure is beyond inhumane, and also having a sibling in the same tiny space makes the problem even worse. No wonder it was insisting on escaping this horrible paddock. Now after its escape, yeah, but going to fantasy land and killing for sports stuff, which a non-social reclusive carnivore would never do as it's spending energy for nothing. But it's a fictional hybrid dinosaur, so fair enough. Saying that though, if the hybrid was say a herbivore, I highly, highly doubt I would be psychotic and killing for no reason. Only possibly because it's a carnivore is it being violent, showcasing the double standards of carnivores and herbivores. The Metrodon were stem mammals that lived in mostly wetlands, although sometimes dry environments. Yet in Dominion, it's crammed and stuffed into tight, cold, dark mines, and there's multiple of them. I'm not sure there's an in-universe explanation, but either way, it makes complete sense these animals attack the humans. They probably haven't been fed in so long, been completely neglected, trapped with others of its kind, in a place they simply can't live in. This is hell on Earth for these Dimetrodon, and their only chance at possibly escaping was seen as a celebratory moment in the movie. These Dimetrodon just want to eat and escape the prison they're in, but instead they're portrayed as the next monster of the week. The Vestatosaurus Rex, or V-Rex, is a fictional evolved Tyrannosaur from Peter Jackson's King Kong, and pretty much a villain in the movie. I mean, it just oozes of evil bloodthirsty carnivore, and this trope is mostly apparent in this scene. The V-Rex just snatched a big filling prey item, yet upon noticing a small insignificant human, it decides to chase down the woman, even with its meal on its mouth. The V-Rex is just wasting so much unnecessary energy just for a tiny human, despite having a big meal 
that is getting smaller and smaller as it's running around. This is just extremely silly and is clearly emphasizing that carnivores are bloodthirsty sadists who just want to kill. Carnivores don't act like this at all. They catch their prey, kill it, and then usually it's time to eat. No chasing down another even tinier prey item just for the sake of killing. The VUX should really just be eating its meal and when it does see the woman, it would either just ignore her or threaten her in case it thinks she's some pesky scavenger. Also later on, three V-Rexes sacrifice their lives just to snag this tiny human which is the worst way possible to waste your energy on life. Although the scene is still great and I love the V-Rex, its mannerisms further enforce the flawed carnivores or evil trope. Now to compare, a prehistoric animal done pretty well is the Cornotaurus from Disney's Dinosaur. The Cornotaurus was an antagonist, but they had no evil intent. They simply are hungry carnivores. Saying that though, they were still perceived as villains and purposefully done so by not having any names given to them, relationships established, or any dialogue. All this dehumanizes the carnos and makes a clear distinction between the good and bad sides. And yet, these Carnotaurus are some of the most tragic dinosaurs in the movie. Their habitat was entirely destroyed by an asteroid, so they had to trek in foreign land to find water and food. As they finally are close to catching prey, one of the Carnos, possibly a sibling or partner of the other, gets killed in a horrifying way, which is witnessed by the other Carnotaurus. Now, the surviving Carnotaurus has lost its partner or a sibling and still has no food that would meet its weekly requirements. It treks some more and finds the herd. When it tries to finally catch a prey item and also spots the animal that killed its partner or sibling, the Carno ends up falling to its death. All this is played as a victory. And yes, they're supposed to be villains. And when I was a kid, I was genuinely terrified of them, which shows just how great the movie was. But analyzing it gave me a new perspective, showing how these animals did nothing wrong. They were just victims of their own movie trope. The herbivores also fell victim to the passive gentle herbivore trope, but thankfully the end were confrontational like any actual herbivore would be in this type of situation. But either way, that's why they, along with all the other carnivores on this list, are the true victims. Victims of their own movie fate and their movie creators who fell into the evil carnivore trope.